This is the new Surface laptop with the all new Snapdragon X Plus SoC. And it's one of the most compelling Windows laptops or maybe even laptops, period. There's a lot of questions that you may have about these new chips and some of you may not even understand the importance or might look at Snapdragon and think, Ew, I want Intel. <laughs> if I was still working at Best Buy, I would wager that it would be pretty difficult to sway someone over to the new Snapdragon laptops, especially with how much brand recognition there is when it comes to Intel and AMD. But here's why this laptop has quickly become one of my favorites. So there's a couple of things that we need to cover first. What are these new Snapdragon chips? Do you remember in late 2020 when Apple announced the new M series Apple Silicon starting with the M1 SoC? which did end up finding its way into the MacBook Air, Pro, Mac Mini, as well as the new iMac. Well, those chips took over the PC industry, boasting insane performance per watt, allowing you to effectively have pro-level desktop class performance inside of a thin and light laptop, which made the new MacBook Pros an insanely sought after product for creatives and professionals. This is all done on the ARM process versus x86, which is effectively your AMD and Intel CPUs. Now, I'm not gonna go crazy in depth to all of the details, because this is something that would require its own video just to discuss, because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to ARM and x86 chips. But in short, a lot of the benefits that you're gonna see from these new chips is gonna just be in terms of power consumption, performance, and battery life. This is where Snapdragon comes in to save the day with Windows on ARM, and this device that I have here, the new Surface Laptop 7, is no exception. But before we go any further, a like and a sub to the channel is always appreciated. I just wanna say thank you so much for the support you've been showing me recently, and we're almost at 40,000 subscribers, so thank you so much. All right, before we even touch on performance, I wanna to touch on this laptop as a package, because in terms of the materials and build quality, I've been really impressed, even in the short week that I've spent with it so far. The entire device is made out of aluminum, which gives it a really nice premium fit and finish. There's almost no flex, the display seems really stiff and sturdy, and the keyboard deck is really strong as well. From a first impression standpoint, the Surface Laptop 7 definitely seems to be a quality device that, to me, doesn't seem to be skimping on the overall hardware. On the exterior of this device, there's two USB 4 ports and a USB-A, which although is uncommon these days, I really appreciate it, especially if you're in a pinch and don't have a dongle to adapt something like a mouse receiver. There's also an auxiliary port for your headphones, and on the right side, you have the Surface Connect port. I'm glad that there's an alternative to MagSafe on the Windows side of things, and I actually really do think that the Surface Connect cable does attach very well magnetically, sitting almost flush inside of the device. And Microsoft also does sell a Surface Connect dock, which does add additional USB-C, and USB ports, as well as support for things like ethernet and external displays. But what I'm not that much of a fan of is the included charger that comes with this laptop being only 39 watts, at least on the model that I have here, which is the Surface X Plus. And although I haven't really timed it, I will say that it does charge fast considering that it is only 39 watts, but it would be nice to see a bigger charger included in the box just to top up a little bit quicker. Though I honestly can't complain because the charger that came with my MacBook Air was only a 35 watt USB-C charger. So it's whatever, I guess. Now let's talk about the display though, because this is an area where I've been really impressed. The one that I have here is the 13.8 inch, but there's also a 15 inch laptop seven. Both sport a 120 Hertz LCD panel. Now LCD is not something that I tend to spring for when I purchase new tech especially since I'm so used to OLED in TVs, phones, monitors. Having LCD just feels like a step back now. And at 1450 Canadian dollars, I honestly was tempted to spring for the new Lenovo 7X since it does have an OLED panel. But after having taken a look at the Surface in store, the glass coating on the display does help create the illusion of giving it more contrast. It does make the black levels look deeper, and it makes the colors feel a little bit more vibrant. Typically with LCD displays, I've only really ever seen them inside of monitors that have a grayish kind of anti-glare coating over the top. So this was much different from what I was actually expecting. And now that it's been about a week with the Surface, I honestly enjoy the display. There's no banding, at least from what I can see, and the colors look good overall. The display seems pretty calibrated. When it comes to using this for professional work, I don't see it being an issue at all, and with the 120Hz panel, 
everything feels much more responsive and snappy, so that's always a bonus. Though the one thing that I didn't like about the display is that the edges are rounded, and while I am a fan of the rounded look, Windows isn't built for this. No matter what app you're in, it almost always looks like the display is cutting off some content, and it just feels incomplete. But at 200 ppi and with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, it's sharp and large enough to where I have a ton of real estate and can comfortably work from. Keep in mind the Surface is also a touchscreen, something that you don't get at all with something like a MacBook, and while a touchscreen may not be on the top of everyone's want list for a laptop, I find myself using it a lot for scrolling through web pages and zooming into articles quickly. Though moving on to the keyboard and trackpad, something that I was actually impressed with with the new Surface Laptop 7 was the glass haptic trackpad. I've used a variety of Windows laptops in the past, and I don't recall this ever being a thing in any device besides a MacBook. And yes, I know I need to use other laptops, but hear me out. It was smooth, the tracking experience is great, and being able to tap anywhere is nice, something that you don't get at all with diving board trackpads like the one that was in the Lenovo 7X. The keyboard, however, is kind of a mixed bag, and I'm only saying this because I wasn't expecting this at all, but I really like clicky, low travel keyboards on laptop, and this is far from that, but I like it. Again, not to bring up Apple, but for comparison's sake, the new MacBook Pro keyboards have been hands down my favorite to type on. But since I do write scripts like this often, this is a big area for me. Though the Surface has a nice keyboard. In fact, I actually really like it. I didn't out of the gate. I actually thought I hated it. It felt mushier. It had a lot more travel than I expected. And I was making mistakes often enough for it to be really frustrating. But after using it and getting used to it, it's fantastic. The extra travel gives a little more purpose to your keystrokes. And once I got familiar with the extra weight needed for every key press, I found myself becoming very consistent and quick on the Surface Laptop keyboard. So while in store, while I may have passed up on it, after a week, I actually kind of prefer this over the MacBook keyboards. Okay, let's talk about what's under the hood now. Like I mentioned before, this is the new Snapdragon X Plus from Qualcomm. It's a 10 core CPU with 10 threads running at a max of 3.4 gigahertz. There's 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM at 8,448 megahertz, and it has an SSD throughput of 7.9 gigabytes a second. There's an Adreno X185 iGPU, which does support DirectX 12 and has support for variable resolution scaling and ray tracing. And thanks to the four nanometer TSMC process, it runs at about 10 to 35 watts under load which is crazy. There's also Wi-Fi 7 support, and overall, all of the specs that are on this laptop are pretty good for the price point that it's hitting. On paper, the Surface Laptop 7 is a great machine, but honestly, it really can only live up to the performance it gives off in Windows, and while I like Windows and use it as my primary workstation, there's no denying that it has some issues. Now, what I was honestly really impressed with was the translation that's happening when running regular x86 applications that aren't adapted to ARM. Everything that I've tried to use on this device felt like it was running natively on the ARM chip with no slowdown at all. The only application that I found some issues in was in Discord where it felt like there was a good three second delay between a key press and it actually appearing on the screen. But after restarting the laptop, this fixed the problem, though I have seen it pop up occasionally since then. So keep that in mind, but I have a feeling that this is just Discord and not the way the translation is working on this laptop, considering how good the performance has been in every other application. Now, this isn't the Snapdragon X Elite. I didn't buy this for gaming or video editing or doing any demanding tasks, but I have dabbled with Photoshop and I found the performance to be perfectly acceptable. Under my use in the last week, I haven't felt this laptop getting warm, it barely needed me to charge it, and it's kept up with what I need with zero issues popping up. Normally, I don't like being an early adopter and I wouldn't recommend a product like this for that reason alone, but I think that Snapdragon and Microsoft have hit a home run with these new laptops. Though, I will say this, if you wanna see any app or game running on this device, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do some more rigorous testing of this laptop since it is gonna be staying in my possession because I found myself really enjoying it. Okay, now this is the part that I've been really avoiding talking about with this laptop, the AI features. And I'm only gonna give this part a second because I don't care and realistically, I don't think you should either because it's just a gimmick. 
The biggest feature, recall, is being reworked because of security and privacy risks, so take that as it is. But there are some silly gimmicks, like the ability to use co-creator inside of Paint to draw and describe an image that you want generated. To be honest, I haven't found this to work great, and it doesn't really seem to listen to my prompts all that well. If you press the Copilot button on the keyboard, yes, there's a whole button on the keyboard for Copilot. Microsoft is really trying to milk this thing and make it work. But if you press the button, you get access to Microsoft's AI, Copilot, and this is cool if you're into it. For me, I don't think that I would ever touch this. If I do need an AI tool personally, I would just use ChatGPT, but I've lived my whole life without them, so I'm good. Though using the NPU, you can actually get some pretty good webcam effects like depth of field. And this is something that I actually do see being beneficial in something like meetings, where you don't want your entire office environment on display. I don't know. Honestly, I think that a lot of the AI features are pretty half-baked. I think it's just a way for Microsoft to cram these buzzwords into product pages and try to make a quick sale. I don't think that you should be buying this laptop for any of its AI capabilities. I'm sure that the NPU inside of the laptop will have some real use cases for a lot of people, but this like on-device AI stuff that Microsoft is doing and making this like the whole selling point is just kind of silly. But anyways, that's been it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more about this laptop, let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like, you know, don't forget to subscribe. I'm always here every week. And uh, if you've watched all the way through, go ahead and put a laptop emoji in the comments down below. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.